produce cunning court to dis the escalate sanction in Southeast, writes Group tells Nigerian government. Welcome to the news and please listen to the end. A pro-democracy group Foundation for Environmental Rights Advocacy and Development, FENRAD, has called on the Attorney General of the Federation and Minister of Justice, Abubakar Mulami, to produce the leader of the indigenous people of Biafra, IPOB, Mazen Namdi Kanu, in court come October 21, 2021. The group's call follows the escalating tension in the South East as many among Kanu supporters fear that their leader may have been harmed. It will be recalled that Justice Binta Anyaku has fixed October 24, 2021 for the continuation of a preliminary hearing in the treasonable felony charges preferred against the Namdi Kano by the federal government following the failure of the Department of State Services, DSS, to produce the secessionist leader before the courts on 26th day of July 2021. Kano was rearrested at Kenya in a combined team operation between foreign security intelligence outfits and the Nigeria government and was extradited to the country to continue his trial. After he fled Nigeria following the military attack during the operation codenamed Python Dance on his hometown at Afarokwe Beku Umahia, while still answering to allegations preferred against him. But Fenrad, in a release jointly signed by its direct executive director, Nelson Nanawafo, and the head corporate accountability and human rights enforcement barrister Akande Femisi, Akande Femisi, an issue to Daily Post on Tuesday, further re echoed the call on the government to produce Kana in court on October 21st and allow the separatist leader a fair hearing in tandem with his fundamental rights. The rise group regretted that the federal government's approach towards the treason case against the IPOB leader has not been helpful and also regretted that the inability to produce the letter in court by President Muhammad Buhari-led federal government has escalated the tension and created economic problems in the Southeast region. Fenrad further stated that Southeast had lost billions in terms of revenue and influence even as education in the region has been affected because of the heightened tension in the region. The organized position posited that the tension in the South East or in any part of Nigeria is not in the best interest of a federal government and does not serve the nation. The RISE group further used the medium to reiterate her condemnation on the emergency proclamation by the federal government through the Attorney General of the Federation, Abubakar Malami, over the security challenge in Anambra State. Fenra stated the Attorney General of the Federation himself hinted a possible emergency proclamation over the Anambra to enable INEC to conduct election in a state that, in addition to call for cessation, has been marred by killings and threats to life with governorship election less than a month away. We condemn such a statement by Malame given the security situation in Zamfara, Kaduna, Plateau States, and even Kastina, the home state of the president himself all for which emergency has not been declared in the face of abduction of school children by bandits and senseless killings by Boko Haram. The group further warned that if the situation is not well managed, it may lead to the, nat the nation into another episode of, Niger of Nigeria 1967 civil war. Part of the release by Fenrir stated, Since the operation leading to Khan interception in a foreign country, an exercise which did not follow the required diplomatic protocols and international law instrument to which Nigeria is a signatory, Kano's proscribed indigenous people of Biafra, IPOB, have declared Ghost Mondays or Mondays sit at home over the entire Southeast as a protest measure against the continued detention of its leader. Even though the separatists come out themselves saying the measure no longer stands, it was much like closing the stable door after the horse had bolted. Today, all manner of persons acting as sit-at-home enforcers had attacked businesses and properties in the region for perceived non-observant of the order of stay at home. The situation escalated to the extent where non-state actors could declare a sit-at-home order from numerous sources, including the grapevine. As it appears now, government at all levels, both at federal and regional, had failed to address this problem, creating at the process needless tension and economic problems in a hitherto calm region. Fenrad believes leadership failure at the region, amongst its five regionalist governors of the southeast, produced Kanu, who manages Radio Biafra, a media house the federal government, after failing to jam, says 
poured out expletives and hate materials against the Federation. The detention of Kano has not served a win-win for the region or the government, and so, if this situation continues, the tension in the region will escalate the more. Against the backdrop of marginalization of the Igbo and other groups in Nigeria South, Kano formed and now leads the indigenous people of Biafra IPOP, a group seeking for the plebiscitary restoration of the sovereign state of Biafra an apparent attempt to restore a short-lived republic that was declared by the military governor, late, late Colonel Chukwemeka Odume Gujuku, in May 1967, after killings of Easterners in other parts of the country, resulting in a 30-month civil war. Today, if the situation is not well managed, 1967 could be here again. And I believe this is not what we want to hear. I do believe this is not what we hear, not want to hear, I beg your pardon. Another war, those that we are alive at the set time, if they give you just a brief history of what went down, you would not wish your enemy to be in that kind of situation. The electorates and the good citizens of Nigeria has been calling on the federal government to use dialogue instead of violence. Instead of pouring salt into an already open injury, instead of pouring or adding fuel into an already kindled fire, you make use of dialogue. The dialogue will act as the water to fire, and the, the dialogue will act as a calming agent to soothe the wound. It will, it will save a lot of life, it will ease down the agitation, and the tension will be reduced. I do not know why the government do not want to employ this particular means. At least give it a try. Okay, fine. Fair enough. In 2017, information getting to us was that even in 2017, Kano, the indigenous people of Biafra, Mazinam de Kano, their leader, was in a dialogue with the federal government when all of a sudden the dialogue was just cut off. His home in Abia State was invaded, leading to the loss of life of his parents. Now, with this happening now, it was going smoothly during the dialogue until there was an invasion. What caused the invasion, we could not tell. What caused the sudden change of heart, we could not tell. Now, they can still, the government can still go back to make use of this dialogue. Call these people together. Allow their leader to have a fair trial. Okay, he is in your detention and you're still preventing him. You are the one that charged him to court or filed a case against him, against him in court. And still yet, you are not allowing him to defend himself in court. I mean, that is infringing on his own fundamental human rights and which the people in these regions are agitating against. These are the things they are not agitating against any human person. They are agitating against bad governance, injustice, unfairness, inequity, trunk. The, la the lack of tranquility all in the land, the lack of equal allocation of funds, allocation of resources and appointments, all these things put together are what these people are agitating against. And of course, we are still, we are still saying, and the people of Nigeria are still saying, that dialogue it remains the more rational.